Ho ho effing ho! Merry Christmas you festive bastards! Papa Console has a gift for you, a video packed with all the latest Black Armoury news. So gather round the fireplace, pour yourself a glass of mulled wine, and let's have ourselves a merry little news update! Right then people, let's get down to business. Ever since the Black Armoury dropped, things have gone a little bit mental. Due to overwhelming player feedback, Bungie decreased the power requirements for the new Forge activity. It's the studio's quickest ever game update coming only a day after the launch of this DLC. So yeah, we'll definitely be talking about that, plus new dawning info, a buff to Prime Engrams, an exotic quest update, a cheeky raid tease, a look at how the Crucible's power ammo is evolving, and a preview of how Bungie is dealing with the community's most desired requests. Did anyone say no the warp nerf. What about Molesto? Surely the melting power of Wave Spitter is getting toned down. Well, keep watching, all will be revealed. Let's effing well do this. So then, the new dawning event kicks off December 11th and lasts for three weeks up until January 1st. And look who's back. It's only Eva effing Levante, and this time she's. Well, just hold up, something's missing. Let me just add some snow. Nice, and uh, let's bring back that festive little Christmas tune. Good, now let's continue. Levante is back, and this time she's got an oven in which you can bake goods. You'll need to kill enemies in order to gather ingredients for the oven. And you can combine ingredients to make treats which you'll need to share with the tower vendors. For example, Gala Doodles for Zavala. Yep, you heard right, Gala Doodles. Chocolate Ship Cookies for Amanda Holiday. Do you see what they've done there? And Chocolate Moats for the Drifter. And to show their thanks, they'll give you rewards. And here are some of the rewards you can earn. This is the new new heavy machine gun avalanche. Yes, it has random rolls, and just in case you're wondering, this weapon will drop at your character's current power level. The Dawning's weekly bounties, however, will drop powerful gear, so that's yet another source to help boost your power. And yes, this utterly gorgeous exotic sparrow Dawning cheer can be yours if you bake enough goodies in Ava's oven. Now this thing has some pretty cool perks. First up, Glimmer Boost. While boosting, this sparrow spawns a present every few seconds until the boost runs out, and these presents burst open to reveal Glimmer. Next up, Glimmer Trick. If you perform a sparrow, trick up to five glimmer presents will spawn. Now these two perks are only active during the dawning event. And of course a new event brings with it a new engram. This is the dawning engram. Now every time you level up you'll receive both a bright engram and a dawning engram. And get this you won't receive any duplicate items from the dawning engram until you've earned all of the new items. Stick around until the end of the video to see what kind of loot these engrams contain. Alright get rid of the snow and the festive music and let's have a look at the new dawning emotes. And here's one last dawning tidbit for you. Tess Everest will offer ingredient packs for bright dust. But before you can purchase these from Tess, you'll need to first acquire Essence of Dawning, which can be earned by playing activities in-game. Now, all players need the Essence of Dawning before they can start to bake goods in Ava's oven. Right then, back to the Forge. Like I said, only a day after the release of Black Armory, Bungie reduced the difficulty of the Forge by lowering the power level of every wave by five. Now, for me, the most surprising thing about this is the speed with which Bungie implemented this change. Now, the Forge is still pretty challenging for anyone under the recommended 610 power level. I completed my first full run when I hit 610. And there's more. On December 11th, with the launch of the Dawning, players under 600 power will find that Prime Engrams drop more frequently and at higher power levels, a helping hand to make levelling up a little less painful. Now, I've completed the Forge four times now, let's have a look at some of my loot. Okay, I'm going to start with my favourite Forge weapon, the Hammerhead. I absolutely adore the roll on this thing. So it's got high calibre rounds, it's got Shield Disorium, Energy Match Shield Explosion, disorients nearby combatants, but by far the best thing about this weapon is Rampage. This thing utterly tears through mobs of enemies and well pretty much anything in its path. Now it's really easy to get the max stack of three times on this thing, so you're constantly putting out increased damage. It really is an absolute mob destroying beast. Next up, the Forge Auto Rifle ringing now. Now I've got high caliber rounds, I've got Dragonfly so I can explode some heads which is always fun, and I've got Kill Clip. Check it out, the masterwork is range, and I've got to say I'm 
having a hell of a lot of fun using this thing in PvE. It's a really decent auto rifle. So yeah, I'm going to level this up to max and bust a few heads. Now, I also got the Forge specific Sparrow Anti-Paladin and I gotta say, this thing is really ugly. Not a fan. And here's another Forge thing worth knowing. If you want the fishhook key, which opens the fishhook clock on the exotic mysterious box, follow these steps. Now, at the start of the second wave of the Vlunder Forge, this tiny blue shield drone appears on this part of the map. Take it out. You'll also find another shield drone at the opposite end of the map. Again, you gotta take this thing out. It doesn't matter who on your fire team does the shooting, you'll all be rewarded the key. So yeah, here's the little bugger. Like I said, it doesn't matter who takes it out, so, you know, do a little bit of teamwork. One of you get one, one of you get the other. Nice. Now, once you do that, a crate will spawn after the third wave. Now, we didn't kill the boss, and the crate still spawned, so there you go. Fish hook key acquired. And here it is. As you can see, it says insert the key, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let me insert that goddamn key and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, the bar has slightly filled up. Fish hook lock opened. We've now got three more locks to open. I'll keep you updated with any progress. Nice. Next up, changes to the Crucible's power ammo spawns. There will now be less power ammo during matches because Bungie's increasing the time between power ammo spawns. So the spawn timers for control and clash power ammo has been increased from 45 seconds to 120 seconds. The survival power ammo spawn timer has been increased from 45 to 60 seconds. And the rumble spawn timer has been increased from 60 to 120 seconds. Next up, Bungie responds to the community's most frequently asked questions. Are snipers going to be buffed? Yes, in January 2019, rapid fire snipers will two-shot body kill. Bungie's also considering allowing more snipers to one-shot kill supers with a headshot. More lower zoom sniper scopes are coming too. The Warlock's Nova Warp super is getting nerfed in late January, and as a hunter, let me just say, lol. The Titans, One-Eyed Mask, and Hunter's Shards of Galena are not getting nerfed, at least for the time being, and as a hunter who uses shards, again, let me just say, lol. The older subclasses, the ones we were all using before Forsaken dropped are getting buffed to make them feel powerful again. Scout rifles will be made less rubbish, because let's be honest, who uses scout rifles at the moment? I'll tell you who, no one, that's who. As for Telesto, well it remains in the special slot, but will be toned down. You can read Bungie's full explanation in the description box below. And as for Wave Splitter, well Bungie said they're looking into it, so expect to continue getting melted by this thing in the Crucible until further notice. Now all these changes are coming into effect in late January, and get this, instead of Bungie releasing two big patches a year, the studio will now roll out lots of smaller updates far more frequently, allowing them to address problems a lot quicker and change up the meta to keep things fresh. That's definitely a welcome change. Next up, the new raid. Worlds First will get the loot that you see here. Now, the raid will see players fight their way through the last city and recover a forgotten secret of the Black Armory. And here's a teaser hint from Bungie. You'll need a sparrow with a right perk. And here's a teaser trailer. Remember this, Guardian. When the darkness sought destruction of all things, the Black Armory persevered. Our very soul resides in that vault. It must be secured. The Black Armory is depending on you. Now guys, check it out. I received a mysterious package a few days ago. Now I have no idea what's inside this thing, but it is addressed to more console, which means it's game related. So I'm really excited to open this damn thing. Now, yes, your boy Papa console has been on the Red Bull. You know, I've been grinding out videos and playing the game at the same time and it's taking your toll on me, I gotta say. But enough of that shit, let's open this shit. Now I've made a slit there for ease of access and we're just gonna ease this package out. Like I said, I don't know what's inside it. Been looking forward to it. And we have another nondescript, ooh, details on the back. Let's just make a slit here through the power of editing and see what's inside this dad thing. Okay, so guys, I've made another slit here and I'm gonna do a little bit of a grand reveal. Now let's see what's inside this damn package. A booyaxi, right. Okay, so this, well, that looks like the PlayStation symbol. So I'm guessing this was sent from uh, Sony or PlayStation UK. And, well, let's, let's delve into this. It's gonna be a shame kind of ripping this open because it looks re really rather nice. I like the packaging. It's like an early Christmas present. Okay, it's gonna be awkward because this is a one-handed box opening video. So things are gonna get super duper Sony. Okay, it's Sony. It's, oh, hello. It's the, it's the PlayStation Classic. Oh, that is awesome. 
Oh man, I didn't even think these think these things were out yet. Oh, that is epic. Okay, let me just rip all of this damn thing off and let's just get it out. Oh, here we go. Oh wow, it is, it is that. That is so cool, thank you so much. Sony, oh, that's awesome. So these are kind of like the, you know, you can get like the mini SNESs and the um, mini N64s. You, the PlayStation, well, Sony kind of followed suit and you've now got the, the mini PlayStation with all the classic games. So what have we got? We've got Battle Arena, Toshinden, we've got Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby. Oh my god, this is a, a, a super nostalgia hit right there. I remember playing so many of these games. It's got Tekken 3, for God's sake. Rayman, oh my god, it's got Resident Evil Director's Cut. That is getting played, mate. What else have we got? We've got Twisted Metal, Mr. Driller, Metal Gear Solid. We've got some absolute classics. The original Grand Theft Auto, for God's sake. This is awesome. Okay, let me just... Uh, let me get it out of its packaging and see what it's like. Oh my god, guys, look at this thing. It's effing tiny. Check it out. Seriously, though, I'm getting some serious nostalgia right now. Look at it. It's absolutely microscopic, but it d does have, like, two player ports. And uh, look, the, the, it's got the original controller as well, which is the original size. And the controller is now bigger than the actual console. So this little thing has those 20 classic games in it. Uh, and there you go. Look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Like I said... Um, I, I've owned a Sony PlayStation in the past, and this is really bringing back some awesome memories. Thank you so much. That's so cool. Now, guys, just a little, got a little Christmas card as well. It's a pre it's pretty cool. Like the PlayStation symbols in the shape of a Christmas tree. And if I open it up, it just simply says, "Dear Alan, Merry Christmas from PlayStation UK. PlayStation UK, you've always, you've always got your boys back. I appreciate that. Thank you so much." So there you go, I, I'll, I guess I'll leave a link to this in the description box below if you fancy purchasing it yourself, I guess. Thanks again, PlayStation. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video and be sure to subscribe as I have heaps more content coming your way. Now, if you want to watch more Black Armory content from me right now, click the on-screen image. It's jam-packed with secrets, dawning loot and more news. Thanks again and we'll speak again very soon.